TechBridge World has always pursued a compassionate approach to developing new technology. When we say compassionate engineering, we're talking about putting the needs of people at the very heart of what we're doing in designing and developing technology. Everything we do is going to affect someone someday. Any way that we're using technology or engineering, there's always a person that eventually down the line who is going to directly affect. When you take this approach, you bring together people from different cultures and backgrounds, which raises unique challenges, but it also creates new opportunities. So I would say the biggest challenge we faced this summer was really how to overcome our views about how technology should be usable and defer almost all of the time to the community's views. For example, with the Braille Writing Tutor, there's the eSlate aspect of it. And I felt like that's so useful. You know, it helps them. They can learn how to use a slate and stylus while still getting the instantaneous feedback. But then when we got to the teachers and students, it turned out to be completely, almost completely unusable because it was so different from the actual slate and stylus that they use. Right, so in a case like that, it was really hard, but yet extremely important to to uh, let go of our bias coming from a Western perspective and not living in that community. The Fetzer Institute saw our work as an opportunity to more deeply understand the important role love and forgiveness can play in compassionate engineering. So the Institute funded a nine-month study of how our Braille writing tutor is being used at the Mathra School for the Blind. What we found is that love and forgiveness are integral parts of our work together. I was just blown away by how much compassion that the teachers had for the students, how much the students had for each other, um, how much Ms. Mukta had for the entire institution, and how so much of what they do is driven by their um, love for each other. I found love in the research process and the relationships that we um, had with the community, just the closeness, the mutual respect, and then the fact that it was really important to build love, trust, and relationships with the community in order to even embark on such a project. We really learned how, how many considerations there were to go into these modes, and through kind of repeated asking and patience, we were able to get there, and it definitely took a few tries. So I think that was definitely where I saw forgiveness come into play. Um, there's sort of a special connection with the people who are going to be using um, using your end product and the chance to really get to know some of those people um, like our project has been able to do with Madhuru School is just an amazing way to be able to love not just what we do but to love the community that is going to be using uh, the thing that we design. This project also shows that when you take a compassionate approach to engineering you don't just make better technology, you also transform the lives of the people involved. I think that the internship experience really um, made me believe that technology had the capacity to make people love each other more and recognize their capabilities and have more compassion for each other in that way. After this experience, I can't imagine building any kind of technology solely behind a computer or a desk without having any sort of connection to the group of people that the technology is made for. I hope to use compassionate engineering in all of the work I do and tie these lessons and tie these considerations into all of the technical work I have to come. We truly hope that more engineers will adopt this approach to their work and invest in cross-cultural partnerships that are based on love and forgiveness. It's one of the best ways that we as engineers can address the many issues created by unequal access to technology and reduce the divides that it has caused.